Hi, I'm Mary Riley, head chef and co-owner of Enzo Restaurant and Bar here in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Today we're going to make a special breakfast treat, homemade toaster pastries. They're actually pretty easy to make and you can customize fillings to your family's tastes. So the first thing we're going to do is make the dough. It's pretty simple to put together in your food processor. You're going to add flour, just all purpose, salt, and sugar to your processor bowl. Put that on the machine. And just pulse that together to combine the ingredients. Then you're going to take butter, best if it's cold, and cut into smaller cubes and add that to the mixer bowl. Do your best to scatter the little pieces around on the flour just so they get evenly distributed. Then in a small bowl, you're going to whisk together milk and one large egg. You don't need to get it smooth, you just want them well combined. Now back to the processor, you're going to pulse the processor until the butter is cut into small pieces about the size of a pea. Okay. Now we've got the size that I'm happy with. I'm going to take the contents of the mixer and transfer them to a large bowl. And now you'll have a lot of, of smaller pieces, about pea-sized. Then take the uh, egg-milk mixture and add that to the bowl. And with the spatula, you're just going to stir the liquid into the flour-butter mixture until it's well combined. So now my dough has just started to come together. It's a little shaggy, which is just fine. And so what I'm going to do is take this and transfer it to a piece of plastic wrap. So the dough's pretty loose. Don't be alarmed. You're just going to push it together. And uh, when you've got it into an, a disc shape, just wrap the plastic around it pretty tightly. And you'll be ready to put it into the refrigerator. If you have saran wrap technical failures, like we all do, just keep persevering, wrap it around, and use the uh, wrap to hold the dough together. And so there we have our dough ready to go into the fridge. So I've just taken my dough out of the refrigerator. It's been there for about two hours. You can definitely do this ahead and hold the dough in the, fri in the uh, fridge overnight or even for two or three days. So during its time in the refrigerator, you'll see that it's really become a dough. It's not quite so shaggy anymore. The moisture in the dough has, has um, sort of come together and we're a little more evenly hydrated. I'm going to roll this out on a floured surface. And um, we're going to do our best to maintain a rectangular shape. I know that doesn't always happen. So I've got a bench knife here to help me keep the dough in the shape I want for uh, the final product. So when you're rolling out a cold dough, it's nice to start just with pressing down to get the dough moving. You don't want to just get in there and start rolling right away um, because your dough might tear or rip. And um, this is a nice way to also maintain that shape to keep it, in this case, rectangular, which is what we want, semi-rectangular. Now you can see I've sort of lost my rectangle. But that's OK. What we're going to do now is square off our edges so we can form tarts. If you want a more rustic look, you can feel free to leave rougher edges. It's totally up to you. I use a uh, pizza cutter for this. It's just a lot easier. But if you don't have one, you should feel free to use a chef's knife or a paring knife, whatever makes the most sense for you. 
Also, I tend to measure mine out. I'm making them for a lot of people, so I want them to look the same every time I do them. So I use a ruler to make sure that my rectangles are the same size. But again, you should feel free to do this by eye if that's what you prefer. And I tend to go for pieces that are three by four. So what I'm doing now is just marking three inches on my sheet. And then I'm going to mark four inches going the other direction. So this gives me a nice regular shape so that all my pieces are the same. And you don't have anyone arguing over, you know, mom, hers is bigger than mine <laughs> or anything like that. You've got everyone with consistently sized breakfast treats. So now I'm just using my pizza wheel again to cut. And I have my rectangles. I also have a little space left here because I have gotten myself nine pieces. So what I'm going to do is just cut one more out of this side here to give me an even ten pieces. I'm going to take, in this case, jam. This is blackberry jam. Um, you should feel free to use anything your family likes or you like. Um, Nutella in these is just great. Um, or you can make, uh, you can use chocolate sauce, you can use fresh fruit. Um, I've also made savory versions where I'll put in um, goat cheese and a little ham. So you've got a lot of different options. Once you've rolled out the dough, there's nothing that says you can't make different ones, uh, you know, have a real variety in your flavors. So I do need to make an egg wash. And so to do that, I'm just, just taking, you know, a whole egg putting it in a bowl, and giving it a good whisk. So I've broken up the egg pretty well. Now I'm taking a pastry brush. If you don't have one, you can just use your fingertip. You don't need a lot of egg wash, but just enough on each of the edges so the tops and bottoms stay stuck together. Now I've got my washed bottoms, so I'm just going to attach the tops. And just with your fingertips, gently press the top layer down onto the bottom layer. And make sure you do a pretty good job of pressing all the way around. You don't want to have any uh, breaches in the oven. The jam will get really hot and it'll look for any available opening and make a real mess on your cookie sheet. I'm just going to transfer those right to the baking sheet. Then the last step to make them look semi-authentic, um, you're going to take a fork and just pierce the top, also to create a uh, opening for steam to get out so they don't puff up and balloon. You want them to stay flat. And then you're going to crimp with your fork. Just hold your fork like that and crimp the edges of the pastries. Again, to make sure that your sides stay closed and nothing comes squirting out in that hot oven. Um, and I give them a final coat of egg wash just so they gloss up in the oven. So now I'm going to put these in the refrigerator to chill for about half an hour. In the meantime, I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 and uh, then I'll bake them. They'll take about 20 to 25 minutes. I want them nice, golden brown and crunchy. The pastries have been baking for about 25 minutes and I've taken them out of the oven. I like to serve them just by themselves. You might want to use a little sprinkle of powdered sugar or maybe even a drizzle of chocolate syrup or some icing. But uh, I think that you'd agree that most folks would be thrilled to wake up to those uh, to, for breakfast or even to have them for an afternoon snack.